Now, normally when you join a new project, each development team, they dream up their own directory structure and it's not really ideal for newcomers and it's not standardized. So Maven solves this problem by providing a standard directory structure that you can use on your project. So here's the directory structure. So my super cool app at the root of the directory, I'll have this palm.xml file. That's the Maven configuration file, uh, your shopping list. Uh, we'll cover the palm.xml file a little bit more in detail later. But we have this one area here called source main Java. So this is where you place your Java source code. Then we have a resources directory. That's where you'll place your properties files or config files that are used by your application. There's also a web app directory, and this is where you place your JSP files, any web config files, images, CSS, so on. There's also a source test directory. This is where you place your unit testing source code and any properties and configuration files that are used by your unit testing code. And finally, there's a target directory. So this is the actual destination directory for your compiled code and also any artifacts that Maven will generate. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of look at an example using some of our uh, coding from before. So we have our super cool app here, right? And our source code will place in the source main Java. So this is where we put our source code under source main Java. You have your package structure and then your dot Java source code. So that's where that code will show up in your Maven project structure. And if you're working on a web project, then you'll actually place your web assets in the source main web app directory. So this is where you'll place your uh, JSP files, any configuration files, CSS, images, and so on. You'll place it under source main web app. Alrighty, now what are the benefits of the standard directory structure? Well, for new developers joining a project, they can easily find code properties files, unit tests, web files, and so on. This is very important, especially on real world or real time projects. You can quickly join a project and know where files are located. Also, another benefit is that most major IDEs have built in support for Maven. So like Eclipse, IntelliJ, NetBeans, they can easily read and import Maven projects for you. So Maven projects are portable. So as a developer, you can easily share projects between IDEs. So I could create a Maven project in NetBeans and easily open that project in Eclipse or IntelliJ or vice versa. The really nice thing about this is that there's no need to fight about which IDE is the best. <laughs> um, I've seen many of developers have shouting matches saying that their IDE is better. Hey, I don't care. Use whatever IDE you want and whatever works for you works for you. <laughs> I'm not going to try and convince you or convert you to my IDE. You know, it's like a religious argument or a religious battle. Just don't even go there. Alrighty. So that's one of the nice benefits uh, there of using Maven. And some additional advantages of using Maven. Uh, one is dependency management. So Maven will find the jar files for you. So no more missing jars and also building and running your projects. You know, no more worrying about build path or class path. And then finally, you have that standard directory structure, which I really like. And then finally, my personal best Maven benefits here is that once you learn Maven, you can join a new project and become productive because you'll know how to build and run the project with minimal local configuration. Maven will handle going out to the internet, downloading any jar files that you need, pulling it to your local computer, and you can run it. So it's really, really cool. So Maven's uh, very powerful uh, once you understand it. <laughs> once you get your head around it, then it's a very powerful tool and you can definitely use it for your enterprise projects.